Thank you for stopping by our channel, Dark Destinations. Our mission is to take you on shadowed adventures featuring dark entities and spooky tales of the past and present. Today, we will be visiting the Amityville Haunting. Here at Dark Destinations, we encourage our viewers and subscribers to send us your footage with story for a chance to be featured on this channel. Without further delay, let's jump into today's paranormal odyssey and see what we find looming in this dark destination. Have you ever wondered about the chilling truth behind the infamous Amityville haunting? Nestled in the heart of Long Island, New York, stands an unassuming Dutch colonial house. Its charm belies a darker truth, a reputation that has sent shivers down the spine of many. The Amityville house, a name that brings to mind tales of terror, unexplained phenomena, and unsolved mysteries. The whispers of its haunting echo through time, painting a picture of fear and intrigue. This house, with its eye-like windows and ominous aura, has been the subject of countless investigations, books, and films. Yet despite the scrutiny, the core of this enigma remains untouched, shrouded in a veil of uncertainty and dread. As we stand on the precipice of this chilling journey, the question remains, what really happened in the Amityville house? The house remains silent, its secrets securely locked away. Let's venture into the dark and unsettling history of this haunted house. It all began with the DeFeo family in the early 1970s. Picture this, a quiet suburban neighborhood where everyone knows each other and life goes on peacefully. A typical American dream until it turns into a nightmare. The DeFeos were an ordinary family living in Amityville, New York. Ronald Sr., his wife Louise, and their five children including their eldest son, Ronald DeFeo Jr., known as Butch. On the night of November 13, 1974, the tranquility of this picturesque town was shattered. The entire DeFeo family, save for Butch, were found brutally murdered in their home. Each member was discovered lying face down in their beds shot with a .35 caliber lever action rifle. The chilling part? None of them appeared to have been awoken by the sound of the gunshots. As the investigation unfolded, the finger of suspicion pointed towards the sole survivor, Butch DeFeo. He initially played the part of the grieving son, even pointing fingers at a supposed mob hitman. But as the evidence piled up, his story began to crumble. Ballistic reports, gunshot residue, and inconsistencies in his statements led the police to a grim conclusion. The killer was not an outsider, but one of their own. In November 1975, Butch DeFeo was put on trial for the murder of his family. His defense? Insanity. He claimed voices in his head compelled him to commit the horrifying act. Despite his pleas, the jury was not convinced. After a 10-week trial, DeFeo was found guilty of six counts of second-degree murder. Though he was sentenced to six consecutive life sentences, the tale did not end with DeFeo behind bars. The house at 112 Ocean Avenue, where the gruesome massacre took place, stood ominously silent, waiting for its next occupants, seemingly eager to reveal its dark secrets. But what if I told you, the real horror began after the DeFeo family met their tragic end? A new beginning turned into a nightmare when the Lutz family moved into the Amityville house. George and Kathy Lutz, along with their three children, had hoped to find a fresh start in this charming Dutch colonial home. However, they soon found that their dream house was anything but dreamy. From the moment they moved in, the Lutzes were plagued by a series of bizarre and terrifying events. Imagine waking up to find green slime oozing from the walls and keyholes of your brand new home. It's not exactly the housewarming gift anyone would hope for. But the oddities didn't stop there. Doors would slam shut with unseen forces behind them, startling the family at all hours of the day and night. A chilling cold would permeate the house despite the roaring fire George Lutz constantly kept burning. Their beloved family dog would whimper and cower, as if sensing something the family could not. Perhaps the most disturbing of all were the changes the Lutzes saw in themselves. George Lutz, once a jovial and outgoing man, became sullen and withdrawn. He would wake up at 3.15 every morning, the exact time of the DeFeo murders, and go out to check the boathouse. His wife Kathy began having vivid nightmares of the murders, seeing the rooms and the victims in exact detail. Their children too were not spared from the terror. They began to act out in strange ways, their personalities shifting as if under the influence of something dark and unseen. Even their house guests weren't immune. A priest, invited to bless the house, reported hearing a voice telling him to get out. The Lutz family fled after just 28 days, their dream home turning into a house of horrors. But questions remain. 
Was it the aftermath of a horrific crime or something far more sinister? The chilling tale of the Lutz family's nightmare at the Amityville house continues to intrigue and terrify us even today. The chilling tale of the Amityville house attracted paranormal investigators from all over. Among them were the renowned Ed and Lorraine Warren, a couple who devoted their lives to the study of the supernatural. Ed, a self-proclaimed demonologist and his clairvoyant wife Lorraine, had investigated thousands of hauntings. But the Amityville case was one that stood out from the rest. The Warrens arrived at the infamous house in the late 70s, armed with their years of experience and a healthy dose of skepticism. What they found, however, was far from what they expected. Lorraine, who had the ability to perceive things beyond the physical realm, was immediately overwhelmed by a sense of dread. She described sensing a powerful demonic presence that seemed to permeate every nook and cranny of the house. As the investigation continued, the Warrens documented a series of inexplicable occurrences. They observed objects moving of their own accord, heard disembodied voices, and even claimed to have captured ghostly images on film. The malevolent energy in the house was so potent that it even affected their equipment, causing it to malfunction or stop working entirely at times. After days of rigorous investigation, the Warrens came to a chilling conclusion. They believed that the house was infested by a powerful demon, one that was capable of influencing the living and even causing physical harm. According to them, the Amityville house was one of the most terrifying places they had ever investigated. But, as is often the case with the paranormal, the Warrens' findings were not without controversy. Despite the terrifying evidence they presented, skeptics questioned their conclusions. Critics argued that the Warrens' evidence was circumstantial at best, and some even accused them of fabricating the entire incident for publicity. Despite the bone-chilling findings, skeptics continued to question the authenticity of the haunting. The debate over the Amityville house continues to this day, making it one of the most enduring and controversial cases in the annals of paranormal investigation. Not everyone believes in the Amityville haunting. Some say it's nothing more than a well-spun tale. Indeed, every haunting has its share of doubters. They assert that the Amityville haunting is a concoction of vivid imaginations and opportunistic storytelling. The skeptics argue that the events were orchestrated, or at least exaggerated, to sell books and movie tickets. Several critics point to the lack of hard evidence. For instance, despite the claims of paranormal investigations, there's no verifiable physical proof to support the existence of supernatural entities in the house. Claims of cold spots, mysterious voices, and unexplained noises, these are all subjective experiences, skeptics say, and can be easily misinterpreted or even fabricated. Moreover, skeptics often turn to the realm of psychology for explanations. They suggest that the Lutz family, stressed by the recent move and the tragic history of their new home, may have been prone to hallucinations or delusions. The power of suggestion, they argue, is a potent force that can make the ordinary seem extraordinary, especially in a house with such a dark past. Then there's the controversy surrounding the book, The Amityville Horror. Critics argue that Jay Anson, the author, embellished the story for dramatic effect. They point to the numerous lawsuits that followed the book's publication as evidence of this. The Lutz family, for instance, sued Anson and others involved in the book and film adaptations, alleging that they had exploited their story for financial gain. Of course, the skeptic's perspective isn't without its own controversies. Some accuse them of being overly dismissive or even biased, arguing that they are quick to discount any evidence that doesn't fit their preconceived notions. But in the end, their viewpoint adds another layer to the complex tapestry of the Amityville haunting. Whether a believer or skeptic, one thing is certain. The Amityville House continues to haunt us with its chilling story. Today, the Amityville House stands as a symbol of one of America's most notorious hauntings. It's a chilling tale that has captured the collective imagination of the nation and even the world for decades. This enduring enigma has inspired countless books, films, and television shows, each adding a new layer to the terrifying lore. From Jay Anson's The Amityville Horror to the chilling cinematic adaptations that followed, the story of the haunted house on Ocean Avenue has sent shivers down the spines of audiences across generations. The Amityville haunting is more than just a ghost story. It's become a cultural phenomenon that continues to captivate and frighten in equal measure. Now the house itself remains, its ominous windows seeming to watch over Amityville with an eerie silence. Its legacy, however, is far from quiet. So what do you think? 
Is the Amityville house truly haunted or is it all just a product of our darkest fears? The mystery remains unsolved. Thank you for joining us on this eerie journey into the shadows. We bid you farewell from the depths of darkness. If you found yourself entangled in the web of horror we've woven, don't escape just yet. Subscribe and brace yourself for more spine-tingling tales. Remember, fear has a way of finding you, even in the quietest corners. We encourage you to email your footage and let's keep the fear alive. Until the next haunting encounter, beware of what lurks in the darkness, stay terrified, and may your haunted encounters be our next story. Until next time, sleep with one eye open, and may your dreams be as unsettling as the stories we share. Stay haunted, my friends.